Alrighty, so I've got the uh, cow halves now separated. Let me talk a little bit about what's going on inside here. So when you look at the instructions, they recommend that you cut this area. Let me get it in camera. That you cut this area here. This is all one uh, flat flange, if you will, that comes around here. And they show you on the instructions how to cut this out. Now, they, from what I can gather, it looked like you cut this angle here. And you're also supposed to cut, it looks like you're supposed to cut an angle here. Almost like you're supposed to cut this corner off, this lower corner. That didn't make sense to me, so I have not done that. I don't know if I'm going to have to do it eventually, but I chose not to cut this corner off. And I also chose to leave a little bit of a flange here, rather than to cut this all the way down and just have a butt joint between this edge and this edge. I decided to leave just a little bit of a flange right here. And I've done that on both sides. You can see it here, just a little bit of a flange so that this can sit up in here. Again, don't know if that's wise. I may have to cut this out, but that's what I've started with. The other thing that I noticed was this flange here. This has not been, I have not done anything to this flange other than to make it a little bit more straight and to clean up the edges. But I noticed that this thickness here was different than this one. This one seemed to be a lot thicker. This distance here seemed to be quite a bit bigger. And again, I find that odd because like I said, this, this is the area here that seemed to be jacked up this way. And I don't know if that would make this flange bigger. But anywho, the point is that this seemed to be quite a bit bigger. And it appeared to me that this edge since it fits up underneath here it seemed to me like this was maybe starting to interfere with this curve this this is curved and it almost seemed like this being bigger was starting to to kind of interfere with this curve so i cut this shorter i made this thickness here the same as the thickness over there i ended up taking about an eighth to three sixteenths of an inch off of this height here. There's still plenty of meat here for the um, uh, the nut plates, and you'll see those in in the plans that you put nut plates here. Still have plenty of material, and it does seem to fit better. This edge does not seem to interfere with the curve of this piece here. So that's it. Um, I've got them separated. I know now what I'm going to work on next. I'm going to do a little bit of a cleanup job here. I'm going to do a little bit of a cleanup job here, things like that. So I'll get back into it when I get this uh, more to my liking or possibly even finished, at least this front part. I'll uh, come back and talk to you guys a little bit more. All right. Talk to you later. Howdy everyone. All right, so before I get too far along, I wanted to get in here real quick and explain kind of what I'm doing. So as you know, I had been struggling with getting the front area of the top and bottom cowling to play nice with each other. I'm still working on that. However, before I get too far out of hand, filing and shaping this area in here between the top and bottom cowling. I wanted to get the top cowling at least cut to fit on the airplane. My theory is this. If I can match this fore and aft, left and right, to the fuselage and to the propeller, I can cut it to length here, and then I can pin it with Clico's to the hinge and basically have it fixed and then I could bring up the bottom cowling get the cutouts for the landing gear legs get the bottom cowling in place and then with this top part basically attached with the bottom cowling up in place I can start to pay attention to this interaction here this crease or this line between the top and bottom 
and also revisit the front area between the two. That way I can kind of do both at once. I don't want to keep fooling around with this and then when I get it fitted to this in place, have issues through here. I don't know what that could be, but I just feel a little bit safer now getting the top installed, getting the bottom brought up, and then kind of work the whole bottom piece to match. The other thing that I had mentioned was that I had not that these cowlings don't have any scribe lines on them at all. So I didn't take anything off of anywhere other than the areas that I've been working on on the front. You can see here, I've got my, long, my lines drawn now for to make the actual cut. And you can see how close that is to the aft edge here. If I would have just willy-nilly cut this off, it would have been way too short. But since I didn't have scribe lines, I didn't cut anything. And now that I'm actually ready to cut, you can see that there's not a lot of margin here to work with. So what I had done, just like the instructions had said, I measured from the forward part of the skin here back two inches all the way around and made a line. Now that I have the cowling in place and in position, I measure from the line over to the cowling two inches and that should basically give me right on the edge of the front of the skin here. So I know some people use tape to give you this dimension. I didn't want to do that because for one the tape is not exactly two inches. Not that it matters and you just need to know what that dimension is. And it does get kind of difficult to take something that wide and have it come straight across the top and then around this corner. Then it's got to kind of sweep forward. I just didn't like it. So I just went ahead and drew it out by hand. The other thing that I had done was <clears throat> I made a reference line on top again here. Here for the center of the fuselage. And all I've done is kind of like what I do on the canopy. I just take this piece, this top collar, and I lay it on. It overhangs the fuselage. I lay it on, and I kind of let it take a natural set. I don't want to clamp it. I don't want to put straps around it and force it into position because you force it into position, you rivet everything, you connect everything, and then when you unstrap it and unclamp it, it's going to want to take some other kind of set. And that's going to put a lot of stress on it and all of your attaching rivets and things like that. So I just feel better letting it kind of naturally sit where it wants to sit. I will show you this later, but I have a spacer up underneath here. It's basically just some cardboard and some rags. You can see I've got tape around the uh, starter ring. That spacer sets the height at the nose. Again, in the instructions, they recommend that you have the front of the cowling below the spinner, like an eighth of an inch or more. That allows for over time as the engine mounts start to uh, droop, this nose will come down and you won't have as big of, as a step. If you line it up perfectly now, over time, as the engine mounts allow the engine to sag, you're going to have a gap or a step. So they recommend that you have the cowling below the top of the spinner, about an eighth of an inch or so. To do that, you need some kind of spacer underneath here. Like I said, I'll show you that a little bit later, but I just used some cardboard and some rags and taped them to the uh, starter ring to get that height. And then there's a gap adjustment between the back of the spinner and the front of the cowling. This gap here, they recommend to be about a quarter of an inch. So again, all I do, I put the cowling on, I kind of jiggle it around, let it take a set. And then I come up front and I check this corner here, the distance from the edge of the spinner backing plate to the edge of the cowling here, basically this distance. And I compare that to the same on this side. It's basically just taking the cowling and moving it back and forth in this orientation to get this here 
to match this here. Take an overall look between the backing plates of the propeller all the way around and the cowling just to make sure that that looks like it's nice and uniform all the way around. And again, maintain your gap, maintain your height, and your left to right gauging here on both sides. It's actually kind of easy to stand here and feel this with your thumb on both sides. Put a thumb on this side, put a thumb on this side, and you can kind of tell as you move it around where it's basically centered. And again, just letting the cowling take a natural set. Now I did, prior to doing all of this, I did try to find a center line on the cowling. And I measured, um, and I'll show you this when I get the cowling off, using the, um, what am I trying to say? Using a square, I used the center line of the engine, the engine case. The parting line of the engine case, I use that, and I put it 90 degrees to the to the flange, the backing plate flange. I made a mark for the center line on the spinner backing flange here, and then I took the cowling and I tried as best I could to find a center line on it, and I made a mark. And I didn't pay any real attention to these. I just wanted to have a center line for each. Put the cowling on, let it take a natural set, set my gap, set my height, kind of feeling with my thumb, get it kind of centered left to right. And then when I checked on it, that's where my reference lines ended up. So I'm pleased with this. So now it is spaced correctly. It is centered nice correctly. It's taken a nice natural set. There's nothing strapped to it. It's not clamped or anything like that. There's no stress on it. Measured my two inches from my reference line onto the cowling. Now I've got my line marked. I'm gonna take this off. I'm gonna cut it and uh, I'll show you some stuff underneath here about the spacers and things like that. So be back here in a second. Okay, so you can see my reference line here, the center line for the cowling. And the best way that I could find to do that was to take a, a, a yardstick and I laid it across from this corner and I just laid it across to this corner with the numbers facing up. Actually, I used my, um, I used my blue pole. I still have that blue pole. I put it across here from this corner to this corner. On top of that, I laid the yardstick with the numbers up and I just lined up a number on this edge here. And then I came across and I measured over to this edge here just to get a distance from this edge to this edge. Divided that in half, that gave me roughly center. And then with that blue pole and that yardstick still in place, once I found the halfway mark, I think it was 13 inches and something total. So I found half of that and then I used my square and just put my square on the blue pole and then I moved the square until I got to that halfway number and then I transferred the line to the cowling down here. Hope that makes sense. That was just to give me a rough guesstimate on where the center of this cowling was. And I brought the line around to the top right here. And then for the engine, this is a, let me grab this. This is a, a method used when you're setting up your timing to find uh, top dead center and things of that nature. You can use the parting line of the engine case. So where the two case halves come together, you use that. And I don't have the square set up correctly, but you basically lay your square lined up with that parting line. Let me see if I can fix this so it makes more sense. Hold on, let me, let me try this here. So you have your square set up like this. 
and you put it, you line up your square with the parting line of the engine case, and then you have this part here square to the back side of your uh, starter ring. And once you have that figured out, then you can transfer a line here. So I had done the same thing. I just brought this over and I put it on my backing plate. I got it square to the backing plate. And then I lined up this end of the square with the parting line of the engine. And that's how I got this reference line here. And then as I just showed you, I basically just took the cowling, took the top cowling, put it on top, got it situated. You can see my state-of-the-art spacing mechanism here to get the height. There's cardboard in here, so it has some, some substance to it. This sets the height. Let it take a natural set. Check the gap in here. Check the height. Checked it side to side in this orientation. And then when I checked my reference lines between the two, it looked really nice. So that's how I did it. Um, we'll see how it turns out. So let me get this thing preliminarily cut, and I'll talk to you guys here later.